we never go back You better find a black guy Before he's back Feel like I'm in the desert So lonely Can't find no soul My fear stuck My past fear stuck My past no wings to fly Feel lost in the dark Feel lost in my dreams Don't wake me up Shit in the space to find my way Purposeclosure at gmail.com. 
That's purposeclosure at gmail.com. We have a caller coming in. Good morning, caller. Thanks for coming in. Now, also, uh, do your private subscription uh, for our YouTube subscribers, okay? There's going to be a private subscription for YouTube subscribers, meaning that there's going to be a private back office of subscription uh, to the YouTube subscribers as well, which is Cassandra Brand, a.k.a. Miss Alexis. Here on the Purpose of Closures radio show, we will be opening up the chat room soon. I'm learning it, and we're going to put it to use this week. Prayer Line Radio, 6 a.m., seven days a week. Wow. All I can say is that it is amazing. Just like this uh, radio show has reached over 16 countries, the Prayer Line Radio show has reached about four or five. It's Japan, the Philippines, Egypt, and Nigeria. And, of course, the United States on the prayer line. So people are listening in, and I thank God, because I never felt like I was not making a progress. I'm just, I'm just being obedient. And that's what faith is. You may not see it. You may not understand it. But if you be obedient, obedience brings blessings. Disobedience bring what? Curses. So be obedient. Even though you don't know why, if God lays something on your heart, now the devil ain't going to tell you to go pray. <laughs> that's for sure. So that's when you know it's of God. We're here live seven days a week, 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The vision for this radio show is to help others get closure so they may enter into the divine purpose. We have an easier way for you to find us now. Instead of going blog talk dot com slash, just put www.thepurposeofclosuresradio.com in your browser, and it'll bring you right here. That's www.thepurposeofclosuresradio.com. Every Sunday, every Sunday, we have financial literacy, helping others to learn how to invest and the basics of money. Now, you probably need to go back and listen to tomorrow, I mean, listen to yesterday's show. There was some more information that was shared about money versus gold as well. Every Monday, which today is, Purpose of Closure with your host, Cassandra Brand, and we're going to um, get into this topic today, and hopefully it will reach out and touch someone that you can share this information with to inspire others because you just never know what people are going through. Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays is available now for um, interviews. If you've written a book or a song and you want to interview, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays are open. If you feel like you really have what it takes to host a show, then those days is open as well. Contact me, purposeclosure at gmail.com, purposeclosure at gmail.com. Every Saturday, Latasha McCray, Rare Jewel Show. She is very, very good, very good, very informative. She is um, with the Cancer Awareness. She's available for workshops, public speaking. She's very knowledgeable. You may contact her as well at mccrlayahoo.com. That's mccrla at yahoo.com. Now, we're going to get into the meat of our topic. And like I said, it's very touching to me. My heart is very heavy. Mother leaves her three children behind in the car to jump off bridge. I couldn't imagine. The children were from ages one through nine. And I'm just going to share this article with you, okay? It's just it's very touching, very touching. 
This was in Pittsburgh, and she was only 26 years old, the same age as the young man who wrote that song and was singing Voices. It was so appropriate for this um, topic today. Now, this story is so unfortunate. You just don't know what is going on in people's personal lives. Sometimes people get so good with keeping a positive front that they don't ever seek the proper help that they do so desperately need. Well, this young lady obviously felt as if she had no other way but to end it. Stanley Elaine Holbrook, that's her name, who was 26, stopped her car on the bridge then walked to the railing and jumped off. Authorities stated that her body was recovered. Emergency service were called after multiple witnesses reported that a woman was on the outer bridge railing. The children were taken to the hospital for evaluation and will be turned over to the state. Although reports stated that they were not sure if the children belonged to Hallbrook, her friends confirmed that the children were hers on social media. Holbrook posted a status on Facebook a while ago about her children and how she will always love them. My kids are the realest ones on my team. The love they give me is unconditional. I'm blessed. It gets hard, but I sign up for this job. No matter the highs or the low, I'm always give them my all because my creator gave me each day to value them and to share the moments that's feeling, hearing, Mama, I love you. Now, that's what she wrote prior to uh, jumping off the bridge. The bridge was closed for about an hour while the police investigated the scene. This is very sad, very sad. You say that you love your kids? Suicide is very selfish. Now, can you imagine? She, this bridge was the Homestead Grays Bridge in Pittsburgh, and she just stopped the car in the middle of the bridge, left her children, uh, the three children from ages one, nine, sitting in a car, mm. and she just jumped over the bridge. Before I go any further, I would like to share this number for National Suicide Prevention. If anyone has thought of suicide or if anyone has even mentioned the word of suicide to you, please write this number down. The number is 800-273-8255. That is the National Suicide Prevention. Once again, that number is 800 800- Two seven three eight two five five. Now I thought I was gonna be able to hold it a little bit better than what I am, but like I said, my heart is really aching right now. And um, before we go further into uh, this topic, we're gonna take a, sh- a short break. Okay, thank you.
Okay, thank you, thank you. I hope you enjoy the intermission and the, the music. Oh, I was just thinking about um, a story that a young lady had shared with me that she experienced. Now she's in her 50s, but this is when she was much younger, I believe in the teenage um, years. And she stated how this young man had reached out to speak to a person and they they didn't take the time out to listen. And right after that, he went and killed himself. So I want to use, unfortunately, this story as an example to learn and listen and listen to learn. If you get to a point where you are feeling suicidal, now I'm talking to the person who has suicidal thoughts and I'm talking to the audience because the audience, they usually say, oh, she crazy. She got issues. I ain't got time for that. Please, people, take the time. Learn to listen and listen to learn. And while you're listening, you know, I'm not saying just, you know, like put spotty bing bing your antennas up because that everybody you talk to is suicidal. But there are certain signs, and one of them is depression. Another one is isolation. Another one is self affliction, like cutters. Yes, people cut themselves. And you notice cuts on the hands, the wrists. Or they wear like long sleeves. These are just there's several, many, many more, but I'm just giving you a few. But if the person that is listening has ever had suicidal thoughts, you have that number, which is 800 273 8255. You can go to your local church. If you have a church, speak with, um, if you're a male, Speak with your pastor. If you are a female, speak with um, your first lady. It will make you feel a little bit more comfortable. Or if you have a church member that you have developed a bond or might have some type of relationship, speak to someone, okay? Everyone cannot afford a therapist. But You can go to the health department. The health department will um, provide you with mental health assistance. I know sometimes it can be very um, frustrating and aggravated because you got to sign this paper and you got to bring that paper. That's enough to make anybody want to lose their mind. But sometimes, you know, if you're feeling that ahead of time, Okay, and you having these thoughts, please go get some help because that's not normal to think of hurting or taking yourself out. That's not normal. It's a spirit, but we're going to get to that later. Right now, we want to give out some resources in order to get some help. Once again, you have the health department. Well, Cassandra, you know, I don't, I don't, I I want, I just want to do it now. I want to do it now. I don't, I don't want to go through no health department or anything like that. Okay. Sometimes it's good to talk to a stranger. It really is. Because you never know, you might be entertaining an angel. I know that family is to be some of the most meanest, judgmental people. And family, you need to stop. It's bad when a loved one don't want to come and talk to you because they feel like you're going to be so judgmental. And sometimes that would make people think of things like that. I'm not blaming anything on anyone because we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but of darkness and principalities in the higher places. 
meaning that we're fighting, it's a spiritual warfare. And the devil is mad. He wants to take everybody out with him, ASAP. That is not of God, because God can forgive you for anything, even murder, but not suicide, because you're not alive to ask for forgiveness. That is the only way you cannot make it to heaven. Because he said that he forgive you of your sin. But if you kill yourself, which is a sin, how can you ask for forgiveness? See the trick of the enemy? Because the young lady made a statement that she will always love her children that they are the unconditional love for her. She spoke of all this love. But she didn't love herself. She really didn't even need to love the children because she did it right in front of them. Now they have to live with that for the rest of their lives. It may even become a generational curse because they witness this, and they may think that's the way out, or they may not be able to figure out because now they can't even talk to her or tell her those words, I love you, mama. This is serious, people, very serious. My heart is so heavy. If you feel like you have, a, if you're starting to have suicidal thoughts, please. Most people say pray, but I'm commanding you specifically to say the Lord's Prayer. That is the perfect prayer because any other prayer besides that is a soulish prayer. You just pray it out of emotions, okay, which is our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed would be thy name means that the name is sacred. That puts you in a sacred place that cannot be touched or contaminated with anything else. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, your will be done. Thy kingdom come, his will be done in his kingdom that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Whatever is done in heaven is done on earth. Whatever is loose or bind in heaven is loose or bind on earth. You can find the Father's Prayer if you don't know it by heart. You can find that in Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11. You don't even need a Bible these days. If you have a cell phone, you can Google it. Just like that, at a blink of an eye. The Father's Prayer is a very powerful prayer. I've learned that. I I, I pull this up, and it says that the Lord's Prayer is important to Christians because it is what Jesus gave to the disciples as a form of prayer when they ask them to teach them how to pray. Another name for the Lord's Prayer is the perfect prayer. This is shown in the first line of prayer, which is our Father. So it is the perfect prayer because that's the prayer that Jesus taught them. All the mother prayers, that's what men do or people do. But this is a prayer that Jesus gave the disciples which God gave to Jesus because the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is within one. For teenagers that have suicidal thoughts, please contact your school counselor. Um, I know sometimes the family may say, well, what happened in this house stays in this house? So it's kind of difficult to talk to someone in a house when things are, you know, chaotic. So when you go to the school counselor, 
you just ask him to please keep this confidential and that you really need someone to talk to and they should have something in place, okay, to direct you to get some help or have someone to come to help assist you. Because see, God created you for a reason, for a purpose. God don't make no mistakes. And he loves you. And you have more people that love you than you could even imagine. Oh, I'm so hurt. Once again, that um, national suicide prevention number is 800-273-8255. There is, um, I'm not blaming anyone, but people, we have to walk in love. We have to, what I mean by walk in love is let love become your lifestyle. When you see someone that is hurting, and I know today you just don't never know. People are afraid to even approach people. But if you got like a a quickening in your spirit to say something, because just saying something to a person, giving them that that attention, a kind word, to save a person's life. I remember, now I think this is the most horrible um, story I've ever heard in my life. I am from Buffalo, New York, and I remember years ago, it just came back to my memory, and I believe it was four kids, this lady had dismembered, killed her kids and dismembered all of them, cut them and chopped them up. I remember years ago, um, this other woman that put the kids in the car, and drown them. Something is going on. And you got some that will kill the kids but not themselves, and then you got some that will kill themselves but not the kids, but still, all everyone is dying together spiritually. Now this woman's children are going to be put into the system. And I pray that they don't be separated, especially that one-year-old. And the nine-year-old, it may be difficult because a lot of people that adopt children, um, nine years old is too old for them. So she really left a mess behind unless she has a family member, which I, I doubt, I pray that there is a family member that would take all three of the kids, which is a very big responsibility. But if she had someone to take off three of her kids, she would have had someone to talk to before she took her life. Mental illness is society way of describing spiritual, a spiritual warfare. And I'm not going to get all deep into it, but I'm going to just speak with, you know, the truth. That is, that's possessed. That is demonic. Because she was, she had to, if if she's driving, something just said, kill yourself. Jump out the car and go just jump, just leap over the railing, off the bridge. And your kids in the car. What more, if you love your children, what more could you have been thinking about knowing that your kids were in the car? That would have been enough reason right there to say, no, I'm not going to do that. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven.
This is sad. Heartbreaking. And people, if you have someone, if you see someone, people say, I just mind my business. Well, this is your business. Helping to make a difference in other people's lives is your business. I know some people are not trained. This is not for everyone. They're a little scary. But there's a lot of soldiers out there that's been up, down, been in the streets, out the streets, all different kinds of stuff. Everyone has a story. Everyone has a story. No one is exempt. Even if you just become a witness and share your story. But no, you don't want nobody to know that side of you. Go to church every single Sunday. Be a Bible study every Wednesday. Be at every fish fry every Friday. I can't take the time out to listen to your loved one or someone that is hurting. We're going to take another break, okay? And listen to this song called Voices. I'm not going to play the whole thing. But he's 26 years old, and this young lady is 26 years old. He's in Nigeria, and she's over here in the United States. Each other every night One love no matter which way you go, now we never go back You better find a black eye before he's back Feel like I'm in the desert, so lonely, can't find no soul I feel stuck in my past, feel stuck in my past, no ways to fly I feel lost in the dark, feel lost in my dreams, don't wake me up Shit in the stress to find my way cares upon him. To cast your cares upon him. I know someone know what I'm talking about, the yoke and the burden, but basically that's what you do. I mean, I've experienced myself hearing voices. I've never thought about suicide, but it was like really trying to, like, it was it was just really just over becoming over there. I couldn't sleep that night. That's when I started listening to heart music. You know, thank God that I have to, I have the word in me because I reached out. I even asked a person who is a therapist, and um, they couldn't really give me no answer. But that's another story. No one can give you an answer when you experience something like that. Nobody but God. And that's when there are two things that the devil tries to do. He tries to oppress you, and he tries to possess you. Oppress is hovering over you. 
It's that nagging feeling. It's depression. It's low self-esteem. It's feeling worthless. It's feeling like you're about to lose your mind. That's oppressed. And then once you break and give in, it enters right into, and that person no longer exists. And the sad part about it, people like that still go to church every day, two, three times a week, sit in church, and nobody never discern that spirit. Now, what do you think about that? You know why they don't discern that spirit? Because there ain't no Holy Ghost power in that congregation. Because Natasha McCray was just talking about discern. Because where the spirit of the Lord is, evil cannot dwell. I know I'm very sensitive spiritually. No, I don't know everything, but sometimes people have this gift and they don't even know what it is. And they don't ask questions because they're afraid they think something is wrong with them. Or the people that they ask don't even understand it. When you pray, you ask God to give you wisdom and and instruction and direction. Because you're going to need it. And this world today, can you imagine you driving across that bridge and this woman stops her car and she runs right in front of your car, runs right in front of your car, or you put the brakes on, bam, she jump over the rail, gone, just like that. That will blow your mind. Anyone that witnessed that, they're going to take they go, they go remember that for the rest of their life. They say mental health is real. Spirits are real. Because we wasn't born with mental health, I mean mental issues. Unless it's something like the retardation or something like that. And still, that's a spirit of infirmity. I cannot say, and I will not say, she must have been high on some drugs, but it's a possibility. No one will never know unless they've done an autopsy on her body. They recovered it um, pretty early. She didn't float in the water for a long time. I'm using this as an example. Get some help. Now, if you were in the um, state of North Carolina, they have what's called is alliance, alliance that deals with um, mental health. And these things cannot be done with medication, but meditation prayer. There's a difference between medication and meditation. It has helped me. I personally I listen to heart music, high vibe music. I meditate on the word of God. I'll be still. I'll be quiet. And, it does, it, you know, when you want it, it'll come because you open yourself to receive the spirit of God in your life. But if you keep fighting it, it's, it's not, the spirit of God is not forceful. It's not going to, like, push everything aside and just, it doesn't work like that. You have to want, you have to open, you have to receive it as a as a gift from God. You don't care if you're black, white, old, young, uh, Puerto Rican, a doctor, a lawyer, a bum on the street. And I and I wonder sometimes. I look sometimes. Sometimes the bums on the street seem to be more at peace and happy than people that live in um, a million dollar house. Because it takes the peace of God and it takes a peace of God to give you peace. And he will protect you. Because you have a purpose. And it's not your time yet. You cheat life when you take your own life. Once again, that number for National Suicide Prevention is 
773-273-8255. Now, it's so ironic because the town that I live in, which is a military town, and there is a lot of, um, what you call it, TV, when you got post model, post syndrome, it's a mental illness but because of the trauma that a lot of the um, military guys have experienced. So it's a, it's a lot of mental, uh, it's really big here, especially in this town. And um, unfortunately, some people, the flip side is that some people play mental illness so they can get a check. So I, I guess that's some reason why some people don't take it as serious. I've had someone told me <laughs> that I can get a check. I said, I'm not, I'm, I, I don't have no mental illness. <laughs> oh, well, you've been traumatized. I said, yes, I've also been saved, delivered, filled with the Holy Spirit, and the grace and the mercy of God is keeping me. So I don't need to be taking no medicine and going to sit on nobody's couch, going over and over and over, because God has already delivered me from my past. And I guess some people say, well, I'm not that strong. That's why you have to share. You have to make that first step. Because if you don't make that first step, you're going to be in that same place. That you don't want to be in. Nobody wants to be in that position. But if you don't move, that position, you outgo the position, and guess what? It moves you where it wants to take you. Remember what I said what the devil wants to do? He wants to oppress and possess. He goes to and forth, seeking who he can devour. And he wants to take anybody and everybody, and as many as he can, out with him ASAP. But the devil is a liar. You have purpose. And whatever situation you're going through, it's nothing too hard for God to bring you through it. Nothing. Hmm. This is a sad situation. Also, um, that link for morning prayer at 6 a.m., seven days a week, is on the web page as well. 6 a.m. You don't even have to get up at 6. You can just replay it. So it's 15 minutes of worship, praise, prayer, thanksgiving, and then the word of God. And we're starting from the book of Genesis to Revelation. So you can get your book and you can follow along with it or you can just listen. This is different when you're reading the word of God out loud to yourself or from scripture to scripture. Some people just take this scripture and that scripture and this scripture. But anyway, stay on focus on the conversation. You are what you eat. If you begin to read the word of God, guess what? You're eating it. You're eating it. And just like when you eat food and it's to nourish your body, that's what the word of God does. It nourishes your spirit your mind, your body, and your soul. And it's never too late. It's never too late or never too early. All you have to do is make a decision. Even if you just read one verse, I, I guarantee you, as you start just reading one verse, you ain't going to be able to stop. Because it'll come to you. Oh, I heard this in a sermon, but it didn't. it didn't come to me like this. The characters will become alive. The word of God will become alive to you. It will roll off the papers and come alive to you, and then it will begin to live inside of you. Yes, that's how it works. People chasing all these material things, and um, you can't take it with you. It's good to have, but not to hog it all up for yourself. People dying for no reason, prematurely. 
So like I said in my book, the living dead, people not living, they're just existing. But there is life in the word of God, and there is power in the word of God. The devil try to trick you and make you think you, you know, you're a Jesus fanatic or something like that. I'd rather be a Jesus addict than an addict. Because Jesus, that word, just there's power in the word. Even when you say Jesus, Jesus, when you just say the word Jesus, there's power in it. So let's use the opposite word, cocaine. Ain't no power in that. <laughs> and both, and, and, and you could they say you're an addict for either one. I think I'd rather be an addict for Jesus. <laughs> yes, I'll take that in. And as far as prayer, I want to share so much about prayer. Also, for those who probably a little bit more, know a little bit about the Lord, or you can also pray in your holy language. Don't be afraid. That's that's personal. That's being intimate between you and God. Because it's not always the uh, mental, the ones that have a, uh, the sickness, mental sickness. It's usually the ones who have a relationship with God. And I just got a revelation. It's usually people who have a relationship with God, and God is telling them, directing them to do something. But the enemy, that's where that warfare comes. God is saying, okay, I want you to start reading this word to your children. I want you to start uh, fellowshipping, do some volunteering, you know, for preparation. And the devil said, no, you need to make this money. You need to feed these kids. You need that man going to leave you. You ain't got time to do it. That's, that's a perfect example of a warfare and being pulled both ways. So usually it's the ones that have a really big calling. So those are the ones the devil can't stand. He'd be like, I'm trying to got to take this one out real quick. Before they multiply, before she put this word in these kids. It's usually ones who have a really, everyone has a purpose. But some people have a calling. Many are many are called and few are chosen. But being called is just like being chosen. I don't want to confuse anyone, but um, God is not an author of confusion, but a power of love of the sound mind. So I pray that that revelation is received in a godly manner. So the enemy shall be trying to take words and twist them. I've heard people say it all the time. I would say something and they, they repeat something. I said, that's not what I said. You, that's not, that is not what I said. So people, please, let's be prayerful. Spend time with God. Anoint your surroundings. You don't have to actually be there 24-7 around a person because prayer is universal. All that you got to do is take the time to put the prayer in the atmosphere, in the universe. Because there is an army of angels of God. There's an army All you have to do is command and activate them in the name of Jesus and believe it. Don't let nothing else come out your mouth that's negative. And speaking of things come out your mouth negative, stop speaking negative things over people's lives and into their lives. Speak life. Speak the word of God into their lives. People are hurting. And they need us. They need you, 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 you. They need us. As believers, people so self-consuming, my kids, my house, my job, my business, me, my, I. I was just going on the island by yourself. 
And then what? You be crying and weeping. Go back home. Mm. It doesn't hurt if a person walks by you for you to smile and say hello. You don't know what that would do to a person's life. You may have been the only smile they've seen in days, weeks, months. Who knows? Maybe even years. But enthusiastic, the spirit of enthusiasm is contagious. Our high vibe spirit is contagious. If you are light and you go in a room that's dark, the room shouldn't stay dark. There should be some light in there. If not, check your bulb. Check your electricity. Check your power. Which is the Holy Spirit. Because we ourselves, we 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 don't have no power. Now, if you think you got power, then that's something else different. But it's through, it's through the Spirit of God. You have to accept that first. And you have to, and it's, and it's, it's, it's accepted by faith. You don't need to see no work. Well, let me see how it's going to work first, and then I'll receive it and believe it. It don't work like that. <laughs> it don't work like that. The people are dying for a lack of knowledge because they don't know him or his word. If you want to live, eat the word of God. If you want your loved ones to live, feed them through conversation, the word of God. Speak life into their life. Not, oh, here come, here come Shanae Here come Shanae Oh, she just, you know, my nerve. She just makes me sick. She just always wanting something. Always got something going on. I just don't want to hear it. That's why I'm saying earlier about learn and listen and listen and learn. Because if you learn, if you listen, you're going to learn because certain words are going to trigger you. And that's when the Holy Spirit unctions you to speak words out of your mouth. Because it's not easy to re- remember every verse of the entire Bible, but through the Holy Spirit, it will give you the words of utterance in time of need, meaning it will give you words to speak when it's needed. That's why you speak what is necessary. Don't be just talking, you know, just to be hearing yourself talk. Speak what is necessary. Speak with some substance. Speak what's just going to bring life into the conversation. Productivity, positivity, love, kindness, you know, those fruits. Remember the fruits of the Holy Spirit? Love, kindness. Peace, joy. Mother leaves her three children behind in a car to jump off the bridge. I will never forget this. Don't forget, national suicide prevention number is 800-273-8255. Shop at www. C-A-S-G online store. You can buy the Purpose of Closures book on the website, which is the Purpose of Closures.com. Donations are appreciated. It will be used for other equipment, for equipment that we can have more of a better performance with the spirit of excellence, cameras, tripods, because we do have a YouTube channel, and you will see the results. You will see the result. Become your own bank. That link is also on the web page on the front. Y'all need to really start doing some research and start running around here acting like ignoring things like ain't nothing happening. Okay? Come on, people, wake up. And when you wake up at 6 a.m., join. <laughs> with the worship, praise, prayer, and thanksgiving daily. 
at 6 a.m. Thank you, listeners. I love you all, and may peace be with you always. Ciao. Oh, God, oh, you're my, 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 my